Thank you guys for watching the Animal One Guys YouTube channel. If you like my content, leave a comment down below. Ask me questions, let me know what you liked about it. And hey, click on the little like button. But please, if you want, go ahead and subscribe because it helps my channel out. That way you can stay up to date with all my videos. And if you want, click on the bell icon to get notified. Right? Right? Huh? One out of two. Not bad. Hey everybody. So, this video, we're starting, starting again. Here's our new project and and here we go again. Well, what do we see in front of me? We see a hatchling, a baby savannah monitor, and um, that's what we're doing. You know, losing Simba was very tough. And I gained a lot of knowledge over the almost decade that he was my, you know, real good and loyal pet. And it's been a handful of weeks now. And I feel much better, as we always do. It just takes time, you know, there's always going to be time. But so here we are, we're looking at this new project. What do we want to do? Well, we have a Savannah Monitor right here. But if you notice, this guy or girl is not the same color. That's right. It's a morph. Wow. Even though it costed $29.99. That's right. One penny short of $30. Costs the same as the normal Savannah Monitors. Um, so one quick thing with the setup is I wanted to take what I had learned from raising Simba and other monitor lizards and just other reptiles and I wanted to do the same thing but as you know Simba was so tame and so good I wanted to pass that on so the same type tank setup you can look in the videos when Simba was younger the same tree right here fake right that he used till he got too big this is actually dirt from his enclosure so there are pieces of scraps of his shed skin in here um because you know hopefully i want to you know hopefully pass his trait his essence on to these guys right at the top of the tank i had simba cremated and his ashes sit right on top in the top middle of this tank. Um, nice little heat mat there, 105 degrees Fahrenheit, safe to the touch, you won't get burned. And, you know, you've got to always move forward. Sometimes there are pauses that you have to take and setbacks and another pause and another setback. But... No, no matter what, it'll come time, you have to move forward. Uh, and that's where we're at. We're moving forward. So these little guys, that's right, if you heard me, I said guys, because we'll get to that in a second, are doing so well. They recognize food. They recognize me. We play around. We pet them. I can pick them up. They're, they're really good. Really food-motivated. And the best thing is to start the training early. And these are captive bred where Simba was not captive bred. So hopefully we'll see a big uh, improvement here. Look at that little guy. Look at him. Look at him eating away. He's already excited. So how do I have this tank set up for the babies? I have a Arcadia T5, you know... 14% bulb up at the top of this two foot tall tank, two foot by three foot by two foot. And I have a thermostat with just a ceramic heat emitter, keeping the ambient air temperature inside the tank mid to low eighties, uh, water tub right there that they like to go in. And I have this heat mat here. Now this heat mat one thing I noticed with babies, which is really good, by the way, I had just forgotten how ferocious the baby appetites are and how food motivated. I mean, it's been a long time. It's been almost a decade since I had a Savannah monitor like this. Um, how inquisitive they are and how food motivated they are. But so I have this baby chick heat pad here. It's got an internal thermostat. It gets, like I said, to about 102 degrees. 
which is really nice. 102 to 105. But I keep this running 24-7. It's only like 20 watts. It's nothing. But why do I keep this running? Well, that way, even at night, if they get cooler or during the day, they can warm their bellies. Well, some people say, what if they want top heat? Or what if they're getting cold at night? Maybe there's a breeze or something, even though they have the air temperature. Okay, so baby Savannah monitors love to dig into a tunnel, into a nice cave, tight, tight cave. So if you look, you see an opening there. There's a little opening over there, a little bit in the back. All this, this dirt is, you know, shoveled around here because they've been digging. That's right. And I keep saying they, 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 they. Why is it they when there is one? Well, there is not one. There is two. Up. The question is, so look underneath here. See how they've dug these holes? Very nice. So that's where they can come in and they can get back heat. Now, where is the second one if there is two? I'm going to guess in here. I have guessed correctly. Uh, probably not going to like this. I know people are going to say, what are the names? Well, I don't have names yet because I don't know the genders yet. And I like to wait a little bit, verify the genders, and see the attitude that they have. All right. Let me go for another roach here. Now, I try to feed one and then the other. Hopefully, this guy doesn't want to eat. But what will happen is, if I feed them both at the same time, they will kind of compete for the food. They will take the food from their mouths. And no, these guys aren't going to live uh, together. The, look at that guy. There he goes. There he goes, right there. Whoop, blink and you'll miss it. And the other guy's over there. So no, they, they'll compete for the food. They'll rip the food right out of each other's mouths. They don't care about each other in that way. But what I do notice, come here, come here, is, come here, little dude. The head is different on both. This guy's head is much longer, possibly a male, and he's the traditional colors. The other guy's head is a little bit shorter, uh, but different color. But they could also both be male, so who knows. But I wanted to make this video. Uh, let's see how he looks underneath his little hole here. See how they get down? They just get down, and I'll see them wedged right next to each other. Uh, and they'll stay like that until, you know, they start to get a little bit older and they need more space and if I see that they're both male you know we're gonna separate them out to not have fighting but um, you know their heads are a little bit different looking so maybe they're one's a male one's a female I don't know but starting off with two captive bred is a nice way to show you what these lizards can really do and there's actually so much more new stuff going on here, guys. I can't wait to share it with you. And I just want to say thank you so much for everyone who donated to the GoFundMe and everyone who has just given me all the kind words and wishes. You guys really helped pull me through a hard time. So take care, everybody. Thank you guys for supporting my reptile rescue family.